God is, is speaking to somebody today. And uh, what I have to say, I pray that you will receive from him. Luke chapter number 10, and uh, beginning in verse number 38 is where we're going to go. Luke chapter number 10, verse number 38. Amen. Give you a moment to find that. Turn in your Bibles or turn on your iPad, and let's read together. Luke chapter 10, verse number 38. If you have it, say amen. 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 Now, it happened as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Mary welcomed, I'm sorry, named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha, she was distracted. This is New King James that I'm reading from. She was distracted with much serving, and she approached him, and she said, Lord, don't you care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Tell her to come help me. Have you ever told God to go tell somebody something? Come on, you know you have. God, I don't want to tell him. You go tell him. Jesus answered and said, Martha, Martha. Don't you love it when the Lord says your name twice? You know, your mom and dad tell you, Chuck, Chuck. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Don't you know better? Martha, Martha. You're worried and you're troubled about many things. Now, that's the verse I want you to notice because that is for somebody today. You are worried and you are troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. Amen. Amen. I want to preach on the most important thing. The most important thing. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. How many of you realize we live in a very distracted generation? I mean, we're distracted by everything. Distracted by social media distracted by the TV, distracted by phone calls. You know, one of the greatest moments of your life is the day you forget your cell phone at home. Because nobody can call you. You can drive and nobody's going to interrupt you. You know, it seems like we, we plan our day and we've got a to-do list that is impeccably written out. We've got a schedule that is like an orchestra melodiously coming together that looks beautiful of appointments and meetings. And we start our day and we believe this is going to be the most productive day we have ever had. And then you start your day and within an hour, it is a train wreck. Somebody stops and says, hey, can I have a minute? Or somebody goes into your office and said, hey, can you help me with something? Or somebody says, you know, that report that I wanted you to do that I needed for next week, I need it by today. And suddenly, within just an hour of your day starting, this melodious symphony of a day has become a ballad that is an absolute mess. How many know what I'm talking about? We're distracted on every side. And, and the thing is, it's not only just in our personal life, it's in our spiritual life as well. Because we, how many want to see God do something in your life? Let me hear you say amen. You really want to see God do something in your life. I mean, you're not playing here. You're not messing around here. You really want to see the hand of God begin to move in your life and the anointing come and you to achieve and accomplish great things for the kingdom of heaven. I believe that's your desire today. That's why you're in the house of God. Amen. 
And so we've got these great plans of, of what we want to see God do. And then all of a sudden, the devil comes along and he distracts us with stupid stuff like somebody saying something that hurts our feelings or maybe distracting us by thinking that we've got to please everybody. And then all of a sudden, by the end of the day, we are so frustrated because we don't feel the anointing. Our prayers are unanswered. We're not doing what God wants us to do. And then we look up and say, God, what is the deal? And it's about distraction. And I feel like I I have a word for you today because so many times we get so messed up in our head about what we would like to see done. And the enemy is, he would love to mess with your mind. How many know that? But today, by the time I walk out of this platform, I believe God is going to do something not in your mind, but in the depth of your spirit. And so we're using... These two women, Martha and Mary, they're sisters. They're followers of Christ, but not only are they followers of Christ, but they're friends of Jesus. They're in his inner circle, and both of them, they've got great hearts. They've got good intentions. They love Jesus. But in this particular passage, there is a glaring moment in which the difference between the two is so well seen. And what you see is that Jesus... He acknowledges Mary, but he admonishes Martha. He commends Mary, but he corrects Martha. How many would rather have Jesus commend you than correct you? (laughs) You know, Mary is sitting there and she's being blessed while Martha is just flat out busy. And it all comes down to one thing that Jesus said in our text in verse number 42. Jesus said, one thing is needful. It's not a lot of things. It's not a multiplicity of things. But one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part. And I'm not going to take that away from her. No matter what you say, Martha, I am not going to tell Mary to do something different than what she is doing right now. And so today I want to discover that one thing with you. So let's unpack this passage together. And let's walk through this story for just a few moments together. And the first thing that I want you to notice is the position of these women. The position of these women. The Bible says in verse 39 that she, meaning Martha, had a sister called Mary, which sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. Now, the context of this story, obviously, you've read it many, many times, is that these two sisters have thrown a gathering, whether it's a dinner party or not. Really, the Bible doesn't say. But it's a gathering. It's a social thing. And Jesus is at, he's one of the honored guests at this social gathering. The thing that I love about this, and it's really not part of my message today, but the fact of the matter is, Jesus was a very social individual, He didn't just preach from the hillside. He sat at the table of those who were his followers and he broke bread with them and he fellowshiped with them. But that's really not the point of the message. And so since it's a gathering, as all women do, Martha is so worried about every detail coming together. She wants the food to be exactly the way that it should be. She wants the house to be impeccably cleaned. She wants everything to go exactly as she had planned it to be. How many of you women like everything to go just like you want it to go? Come on, women, raise your hand. You know what it is. Amen, you're Your your, your husband's on, on the couch watching football and you're out sweeping the bathroom. Man, that was your time to say amen, ladies. You should have shouted me down on that one. But women, they've got this thing about making sure that everything is just right the way that it should be. And so now here is Martha, and she is so busy, and she's sweating, and she's toiling, and she's laboring, and she's full of anxiety. She wants to make sure that it all gets done, and she wants to make sure that the guests are welcomed and honored. And then all of a sudden, she looks around and realizes that her sister is nowhere to be found. And so she looks over, and where is Mary? She is sitting on the floor. And she is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Now, if you're Martha, and if you are a perfectionist, immediately what rises up within you? How many know a little bit of aggravation comes up inside of you and say, how dare you sit while I am over here working my tail end off, and you are just simply sitting there, you lazy thing. Now, that's my translation of the scripture. But there's 
there's got to be a level of aggravation because Martha immediately confronts the situation because here she... Now, what Martha was doing is not a bad thing. What Martha was doing was in no wise wrong. But you see, my friend, it was the position that Mary found herself in that was the most important thing because Mary was by no means lazy, but rather Mary was not just simply sitting at the feet of Jesus. She was submitted to the word of Jesus and she was doing the thing that Jesus wanted her to do and that is to take in his presence and to be able to be blessed by his word because you see my friends sometimes we get so busy doing good things that we forget it is not about what we do it is about the presence of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that is living within us that is the most important thing somebody shout amen Amen. Listen, sometimes in ministry, we get so busy serving that we forget it is not about serving. It is about submitting to the will of Almighty God. Amen. We serve in the food pantry. We serve in the cafe. We serve on the worship team. We serve as an usher and a greeter. And all of those are good things. But I want to tell you, church, amen, the most important thing is not having every I dotted and having every T crossed And having everything impeccably planned, the most important thing to the body of Christ is for Jesus himself to be the honored guest at everything that we do. And the presence of Almighty God to walk into this place and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to breathe in this house. Because he is the honored guest and everything we do is for him and for him alone. Somebody shout amen. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, I believe we're living in a day right now where so many people have what I call the Martha syndrome. You are so busy. You're busy at home. You're busy in your marriage. You're busy with your children. You're busy in the church. And all of them are good things. But you've become so busy that you've forgotten to pray. And you've forgotten to crack open, amen, the word of God. And you've forgotten that sitting at the feet of Jesus is what he loves the most so he can wrap his loving arms around you and tell you how much he loves you how much favor how much blessing how much joy how much peace how much prosperity that he wants to pour into your life amen but we get so busy that we forget and I feel like the Lord is challenging us together that he longs for you to come into his presence and to stop with all the stress and the anxiety and realize oh how much he loves you listen friend I realize life gets busy but never too busy to acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ who gave everything and died and rose again and he loves you with an everlasting love You see, sitting at feet is a sign of submission to that person. I mean, think about this. Ephesians chapter 1, as you look in the Word of God, talking about Jesus in verse 22, the Bible said, He hath put all things under His feet. How many know Jesus is the absolute authority of everything in this universe? Uh, Let me hear you shout amen. Uh, There is no demonic spirit uh, that will ever take away his authority. There is no spirit of sickness or infirmity uh, that will ever take away. Oh my God, Jesus. uh, He is the apex uh, and the author of creation. He's in charge of everything. uh, And to show that he is an absolute authority, he said everything's under his feet. Amen. When Jesus shared the Last Supper with his disciples, what did he do? He took a towel, the Bible said, and a basin of water, and he knelt at the feet of his disciples, and he washed their feet. Why did he wash their feet? He washed their feet to teach us that we are to submit each other to the fellow body of Christ. And that's another message. But brother, one thing that is missing in the body of Christ is a spirit of submission and servitude to each other. 
But when you kneel at someone's feet, what are you doing? You are submitting to what that person is saying. And so Mary is not lazy. Mary is not ignoring. Mary is not oblivious to what needs to be done. But she also knew, I could do all of that. But until I am at the feet of Jesus and allow his word to get inside of me, none of that is going to matter. Oh, listen, church, we can have the finest facility and the most talented worship team, but without sitting at the feet of Jesus, how many know none of that matters? Amen. I'm not here to go through A, B, C, D outline. I'm here to see Jesus do a miraculous work in your life and change you from the inside out and his Holy Spirit. Amen. To anoint you. Because I know we live in a day right now when churches have got everything so well planned. I mean, the clock is on the back of the wall, 60 minute service. Everything is so well planned. But the only thing that is missing is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I mean, they've got everything you could ever desire. They've got slides for the kids, and they've got hot dogs for you. But I'm going to tell you, I'm not against slides and I'm not against hot dogs. But slides can never replace that fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. As we have already felt in this house, when he comes and he fills us with the joy of the Lord. Listen, my friend, I'm preaching to you because you've been so busy that you have missed the most important thing. The position. But now... That leads me to the second thing that I want to share with you. Not just the position, but I want you to see the product. Verse 41, Jesus, he answered, he said to her, he said, Martha, he said, you're careful and you're troubled about many things. Now, the problem with Martha is not what she's doing. The problem with Martha is what it had created within her. The problem with Martha was not the fact, how many know Jesus wants us to serve one another? Let me see you raise your hand. In fact, if you look earlier in this chapter, in verse number 36, Jesus said, he said, which of these three think you was the neighbor to him that fell among thieves? He said, he that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, he said, go and do thou likewise. Wasn't that Martha was doing something wrong, but rather it was the product of what had been created within her. In fact, the word distracted in the scripture here can also be translated meaning to be pulled or to be dragged in different directions. And I feel as I have prepared for you today to deliver what God has laid on my heart. How many in this house at one time in your life, in fact, even recently, feel that you are so busy, you are being pulled in too many different directions? Come on, acknowledge it by raising your hand. Amen. You've got this person pulling on you over here. You've got your kids pulling on you over here. Then you've got the church pulling on you over here. And then you've got phone calls pulling on you over here. And it feels as if you are being pulled in so many different directions that you are about to snap and the devil is throwing one more thing on top of you because he wants you to emotionally lose it and I'm telling you today you are here because God is saying it is time for you to stop because the anxiety and the stress that is inside of you is not from God because the Lord said I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly and the abundant life is not the same as the stress life and today we're going to take authority and we're going to reduce that spirit of anxiety and stress because it is of the devil and he wants to destroy you and we stand in Jesus name and say stress you are not my friend you are my enemy and I take authority in the name of Jesus I will not be pulled apart any longer amen because you see when you get so busy what happens is you get frustrated Sometimes in ministry, how many know ministry can sometimes be a little frustrating? The reason is you're dealing with people. And how many know people can be frustrating? Look at your neighbor and say, people can get on my nerves. Don't you feel better? 
You've been thinking it for a long time. You just have never verbalized it. People can get on your nerves. And you see, I'm talking, I'm talking to you because you're in a position right now. Can I just speak from my heart today? Is that all right? You're in a position right now where the enemy has put certain individuals in your life that are pulling on you that have not been sent by God. They've been sent by the enemy and they are pulling you away from your God-given calling. I'm talking to somebody by the Holy Ghost that you are being pulled out of your God-given calling. And because of that, you are in a state of frustration because you're not operating in your God-given gifting. And the reason is people have come and they have begun to tug and pull on you and pull you in a direction. God never intended for you to go and the devil is doing his best to tear you apart let me tell you get back where God wants you to be and say goodbye to the people that are pulling you in the wrong direction and let Jesus be Jesus and operate in his calling and not somebody else's Come on, let that soak in for just a minute. Other people don't know the will of God for you. Oh, they think they do. They think they do. Oh, sister, you ought to be, you ought to be leading a Bible study. You got so much of the word. Oh, sister, you ought to be on the platform. You ought to be. Let me tell you something. Don't let somebody put something in your head that the Spirit of God has not put in your heart. Let me say that again. Don't let somebody put something in your head that the Spirit of God has not put in your heart. Because you see what the devil wants to do is fill your head with all kinds of stuff that's going to blow up your mind. But Jesus said, no, if it's causing anxiety, it's not of me. If it's causing frustration, it is not of me. And sometimes you just got to shut the door, put the phone down and say, thank you, but no thank you. I am following my Lord and my Savior. He knows what is best for me. It may be a good idea, but it's not a God idea. And I'm only having God ideas because he's the one that saved me and called me. He is my master. Amen. Hallelujah. Your kids are not your master. (laughs) I know you go to Walmart and you see a lot of kids who are the master. But your kids are not your master. Your spouse is not your master. Your friend is not your master. Your master is sitting on the throne of heaven. He speaks and the entire universe bows at his feet. His hand moves and the storm is calm. What am I telling you? You've got to say yes to the master and stop listening to everybody else because stress, stress has begun to take over your life. I'm not saying you're a sinner. I'm saying you're a stressed saint. And the problem is, I'm just going to be real with you. I'm glad you gave us the gift before I preached. (laughs) Honey, guard that with your life. You touch that woman, I'll kick you in the next week. I won't, I won't. Let me tell you something. You see, what happens is when you get stressed by following somebody else's idea for your life, what happens is then you go home And you snap at your spouse. You yell at your kids. You get angry for no reason at all. And then we say it's because I'm so busy. You see, my friend, when ministry becomes a point of anxiety for you, you have lost the most important thing. You see, what happened here, Martha was so busy that she forgot the whole reason she was having a party. The party was to honor Jesus. The party was to honor the Savior. But she was so busy preparing 
that she forgot to honor the one who was the most important guest. You see, so many times what we do is we come to church and we want everything to be so well done and we get angry when the, or the worship team sings too loud or the pastor sweats too much or somebody didn't shake my hand or I didn't, the coffee was horrible, tepid, cold. It's not cold. But we got, we got all kinds of, of, let me tell you something. It's not about the pastor and it's not about the music and it's not about the coffee. We are here to prepare ourselves for the honored guest and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And what I do, I don't do do for you I do for him amen our greeters don't shake your hand to make you happy they shake your hand to honor the Lord Jesus Christ who is the one that has brought you into this house he's why we do what we do amen and you see if you get involved in ministry and you forget that you're not doing it for the pleasure of men you're doing it for the pleasure of God you will get burned out you know why you'll get burned out because you'll do ministry and nobody will pat you on the back. Nobody will say, good job. Nobody will honor you. And you're going to be like Martha. And you're going to look at Mary, those no good, unthankful, ungrateful people. Don't they realize what they got in me? I'm the best greeter. I'm the best usher. I'm the best musician. They don't realize how blessed they are. Let me tell you something. When you begin to, re when you forget that you're doing it for Jesus and not for them, amen, you begin to be like Martha and you walk up to Mary and say, what are you doing? You're not working as hard as I am. You're not doing what I am. And we get, look, look at this, look at this. She, she, this, this whole frustration causes a family squabble between two good women. And many times what happens is when you are in a place of frustration in your life, you go home and it causes a squabble between a good family. How many know what I'm talking about? Husbands and wives get into disagreements. And the thing about Martha is she tried to pull Jesus in the middle of their squabble. She said, Lord... Do something about her. You ever been to somebody's house and the family gets in an argument while you're sitting there? Isn't that awkward? I mean, you're sitting there and, and they're arguing, they're yelling at each other, they're, they're having this big, I mean, they're smack talking to each other and it's just like you are just sitting there. Awkward. You just want to get out of there as quickly as you can. But what's even worse is when they try to drag you in the middle of it. Come on, guys. When that husband looks at you and says, hey, buddy, don't you agree with me? Because uh, uh, if I agree with you, I'll make your wife mad and my wife mad. And I can't afford that, buddy, so I got to go. I'm sorry. My dog has to go to the bathroom. I just forgot I got to get home and I got to take him out. She tried to pull Jesus in the middle of it when she should have said, you know what? Forget the vacuum and the broom and the dust. I've got to get into the presence of my honored guest. And what I am telling you today, my friend, is you have got to get into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know this is simple, but I'm talking to stressed out people. And the Lord is saying, just quit doing what you're doing and come and sit at my feet and partake of my word again. Because look then thirdly at the protest. Because not only did she pull Jesus in the middle of it, it's almost like she was blaming him for it. Jesus, you could do something about this if you wanted to. You could make her help me if you wanted to. I want you to hear me because I love you. But you see, my friend, when bitterness, when bitterness gets in your heart, and anxiety and frustration gets in your heart. It doesn't produce any good fruit. It ruins the fruit that is already there. Bitterness causes a rotten stench 
to come out of your spirit. And what happens is, when you are in that place, we have a tendency to blame God. God, you could have changed the situation. God, you could have done something different and you don't have to say a thing. I know that I'm on track. All of us have been in that position where we say, Lord, you could have done something different. But you see, Jesus, amen, he knows the end from the beginning. And sometimes when things don't work out, it just may be God's way of getting you to come back to him because you've been working on your own and you've been trying in the flesh. And Jesus has said, when you get to the end of yourself, come back to me because I've got everything that you need and you will have the joy that only comes from my presence. Amen. Frustration means you need to come running back to God and not blame him. Did you hear what I'm saying today? Is this helping anybody? It's not God's fault. I said it's not God's fault. It's not God's fault things didn't work out. It's not God's fault things didn't go the way that you wanted them to go. Sometimes it's God's way of getting your attention. And I feel like today, he's got your attention. I said, he's got your attention. Because you came into this place so full of anxiety, stressed out about how busy you've been. You've come in angry at the people that are not working the way that you work, not as hard as you work. They don't have the heart that you have. And yet you say, God, why don't I see you moving the way that I want you to move? And I believe the Lord has allowed this to happen because of verse 42, look. He said, one thing is needful. Mary has chosen that good part. Mary hath chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. As I close, I look at the words of Jesus more as an invitation rather than a rebuke. He's not rebuking Martha. He's not angry at Martha, but rather he's giving her the invitation to enjoy the same blessing that Mary is enjoying. He's saying, Martha, come. Stop what you're doing. Stop being so busy. Stop being so stressed out. And just come sit at my feet. When's the last time you prayed till you felt the presence of God? When's the last time you prayed till you felt the anointing just immerse you in His love? They say the average Christian prays maybe three to five minutes a day. The average pastor maybe five to seven minutes a day. Church, I believe Jesus is calling us because see, what, what happens is In our society, we identify ourselves by what we do. I'm a pastor. I'm a worship leader. I'm this. I'm that. I'm this. No, my friend. I'm a Christian first. And so we think that the more we do, the more blessed we will be. But sometimes it's not the more that we do, but rather it's the less that we do so that we can actually get into his presence. And this morning I am speaking to you, but it's not my words that you hear, but the voice of the Holy Spirit deep inside where he's saying, just come. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for my yoke is easy. I said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. If you're carrying a yoke that is heavy, it's not of God. And today you need to shake it off. You need to get it off. You need to take the burden that the enemy has put upon your back that's caused stress and anxiety. And you need to lay the burden down at the feet of Jesus. Because he said, my burden is light. He's saying, come. Be merry. Martha. Come, be like your sister. 
And as your shepherd today, I tell you, come and sit at his feet. Sit at his feet. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, oh God, your Holy Spirit is so amazing. You are so amazing, God. Thank you for the anointing that is in this place. But Lord, there's people listening to me right now that the problems of life have caused stress and anxiety. They feel like they are running in so many different directions. And today, you're just simply saying one word. It's come. 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 Leave all of the stress behind and come. Leave all of the busyness behind and come. Because I will give you rest. I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest. This team's going to sing this great song, Good, Good Father. And I feel like today some of you have forgotten how good God is. It seems like it's been a theme from the time that we opened this service about how good God is. How many believe He is a good God? Let me see you raise your hand and shout amen. Uh, Come on, stand to your feet. He's a good God. I said He's a good God. And if you're in this place and you feel that anxiety and stress overwhelming you and you have become a Martha so busy about doing even good things that you have forgotten the most important thing, I want you to step out of your seat right now come on just as they sing step out of your seat and I want you to run to this altar and get into the presence of almighty God I want you to feel his presence amen feel his joy feel his peace amen come on as they sing right now glory to God the spirit of the Lord is here spirit of the Lord is here to give you rest I know that he wants to give